It's four teams that stink out loud and one that only kind of smells a little bit. The 2024 Locked On NBA season previews continue right now. This is Locked On Podcast Network's 2024 NBA season preview. Your team every day. Welcome back to the 2024 Locked On NBA season previews. This episode, we are focused on the teams predicted by FanDuel to land at the bottom of the NBA's Eastern Conference. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm Sean Woodley, host of Locked On Raptors, and I shouldn't be here. I will also be your host throughout this afternoon as we're joined in by Brandon Scott from Locked On Wizards, Hayes from Locked On Bulls, and Kuka Heel of Locked On Pistons. And much like the Nets this coming season, Adam Armbrecht of Locked On Nets did not show up for this recording. We'll hear from him a little bit later on. Today, we're going to look at which of the teams in this group don't belong in this group, which teams are and are not full on tanking for Cooper Flag, which team has the brightest future, and who is the best fit for Cooper Flag should they land him. Excited to do it here. Let's start off, guys, with uh, anyone who doesn't belong. And please give me the floor. Uh, I don't belong here. The Toronto Raptors are better than all these sad sack squads. I'm sorry. I know they're not great. They probably are, at best, the 10 seed in the Eastern Conference. I'm talking about literally one team I feel slighted by uh, being listed below in the FanDuel projections. That is the Charlotte Hornets, who should be here. Uh, But I just think the Raptors have better players than these teams. They have more interesting young players. They have actual veterans who are pretty good as well. And guys like Jakob Pertl and Kelly Olynyk. Uh, you guys are free to tell me I'm wrong here, but I feel a little bit like I'm the one thing that doesn't belong. Uh, Brandon, am I wrong here? Am I out of my mind? Do the Raptors belong at the very bottom of the Eastern Conference? No, nah, I'm with you. I think the Hornets should definitely be in the room. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, we, now, we definitely belong in the room. I mean, I think that if you look at the Wizards, if you look at a long-term picture, we're hitting in the right direction. You know, if you look at what's going on in D.C., we have never really been through a proper rebuild. Now, mm-hmm. you know, underneath this new front office with uh, Michael Winger and Will Dawkins, they're finally hitting the reset button and doing it right. So it's going to take a while here in D.C., but we're definitely hitting the right direction. Koo, what about you? The A, do I belong here as the Raptors host? Should someone else be in my seat? And uh, do the Pistons belong in this group as well? Uh, well, the Pistons 100% belong in here, but uh, how many teams <laughs> – how many teams are like, what's the minimum or the maximum requirement for this group? Is it five? Because if it's five, then no, Charlotte shouldn't be here. You guys should be here. Wow. Um, I, wow. Yes. Um, for, so for a few reasons. One, you guys did win 25 games this past year. It wasn't like mm-hmm. you got lit up either. Um, mm-hmm. Charlotte had an excuse. They lost their best player for the majority of the season. Um, and despite that, they had a really good season out of Brandon Miller. They also dealt with injuries to Mark Williams as well. So, Charlotte's a team I'm actually pretty high on. I think we'll probably make the play-in. Uh, if LaMelo stays healthy, along with Bram Miller have, going into his second season when he played really well the first year, especially if Mark Williams stays healthy, um, along with bringing in some defensive wing, Josh Green and Grant Williams, I think Charlotte's going to be a lot better than people think. Yeah, I mean, LaMelo Ball is staying healthy. Definitely a thing that happens all the time. Hayes, what about you? I actually agree with you. I think that the Charlotte Hornets, last time LaMelo Ball was remotely healthy, that team won 43 games, and this team is better than than that team at withstanding if LaMelo Ball is not healthy. I actually think the Charlotte Hornets will be considerably better than the Toronto Raptors, and I actually think you guys are going to be looking at we're, we're brothers right now because you guys are going <laughs> to quickly find out that Scotty Barnes is not a player to build around, I think, very short. But we should oh, absolutely be here as well. Hold on. Is this – in any way, a Scotty Barnes, Josh Giddy comparison I'm hearing no, right now? No, oh, Josh Giddy, no. I'm talking about Zach okay. Levine. Like, J- oh, Scotty okay. Barnes uh, is the player that you build with. He's not a player that you build around, in my opinion. Still a really good player. But I think they're going to – if the Toronto Raptors are hoping that their next phase is building around Scotty Barnes, I think they're going to come to a realization very, very quickly that the cap on that is going to not be what they think it is. What they think it is. Yeah, but you can say the same thing about LaMelo Ball, too. I mean, can, do you really consider LaMelo Ball as that building block? I mean, I'm yeah, just saying. I mean, you can argue Brandon LaMelo, Miller. If LaMelo Ball is healthy, absolutely. But I think at this – and that's why I made sure I pointed out that even if LaMelo Ball isn't fully healthy, I think that that team built with Miles Bridges, with Brandon Miller and what he showed, if Mark Williams stays healthy, that they're a team – I'm not saying they're going to light the world on fire. I think with LaMelo Ball being remotely healthy, LaMelo Ball can give them 62 or more games this season – 
I think that they are absolutely going to, at minimum, be a playing team. I think that they have a higher ceiling than that if they can get more relative health. Um, but I think that they're better equipped with their young players and having young players that also can take another step forward as well. Then I look at the Charlotte Hornets overall outlook is better than the Toronto Raptors. Okay. Let me push back. I'm send on the some high tops. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just saying someone send Lamelo some high tops and he'll be straight. <laughs> I don't know, man. Those those ball, right. those ball brothers, like the 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 lower body injuries, is just contagious. They got, they got like, get how do you they have three stop. sons and, and and one healthy knee out of three people? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we also get Lamelo Lamelo Ball a personal driver for this coming season as well. That would be kind of good as well, I think. <laughs> right. uh, let me push back on the Scotty Barnes thing for a hot second. Uh, look, the Raptors last year. I'm not. I'm not going to disagree. They were terrible. They won 25 games. They were also a team that came into this season, you know, by their own fault, ready to trade their best player, made it super awkward for the first half of the season, mm -hmm. eventually did trade their best player in Pascal Siakam, played some pretty good ball in the month of February where they were five and five, beat some good teams, had some close games against some very good teams. And then Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pertl get hurt in back-to-back -back games and miss the last 20 games. And guys like Jamias Ramsey and Malik Williams were getting heavy workloads for that team. I don't think they would have finished with 25 wins had Scotty and Jakob Pertl not gotten hurt. I think they would have closed out that season and actually pushed and maybe made the play-in. But just circumstance made it so they didn't have the juice to do it. I think with a fresh start, without the awkwardness of the Siakam thing hanging over everything, I think the Raptors have a chance to, like, again, I, off the top, I declared them to be only kind of smelly compared to these teams that stink out loud. Uh, I, I think they're at best like the ninth seed if everything breaks perfectly. But I, I think they undoubtedly have the most cohesive and normal basketball team of any of our teams here. Um, and that includes the Brooklyn Nets. We don't really need to consider the Brooklyn Nets in any of these things because they're going to win like 12 games. But, yeah, I, I, I think... There's more to this Raptors team than just Scotty Barnes as well. I mean, he was an all-star last season. He's a 28 and six guy. I think he's got more to give on the offensive end. He became a defensive monster. And then you have Emmanuel quickly. RJ Barrett, like, didn't miss a shot down the stretch last season. He was unbelievably efficient. Jakob Pertl drives good ball. Uh, I, I stand by my stance that I do not belong here talking to you losers uh, with that. I love you all. Um, is anyone here actively not tanking? Um, we aren't because you know, we're stupid. The Pistons are stand that. on that. I'm just I, like a, there's so, a, so there's so the a Bulls thing are with the Bulls, right? Yeah. The Bulls are generationally incompetent in their front office. Like the, the so no, we're not actively tanking. This Bulls front office, I, and it's funny because I was talking to Nick, the channel manager, uh, last year, and it, when he was like, "I'm surprised that the Bulls are absolutely going to blow this thing up right at that trade." I'm like, "No, they're not. They're going to absolutely try to compete for the plan." Like this front office is so allergic to anything that means taking a step back to take a longer term step forward that is literally going to keep us spinning in the same place for at least a decade. Coop, you mentioned the Pistons aren't trying to tank? No, the Pistons aren't tanking, which is um, maybe, a, I don't know how exactly, if it's, I don't think it's worse than what Hayes is describing. You guys not blowing it up at the deadline was truly questionable. Um, <laughs> but the Pistons, this is why I'll push back on. Now, I don't think the Pistons, if I had to put my hard-earned money on it, I'm not betting on their over because they have taken the under for, like, the last four years. So I refuse mm -hmm. to get caught up in that. But I will say the Pistons, out of all the teams here, I think probably, I believe, probably have the most hope out of any team here because they have a young Ooh. core that no one else has in this party or in this in this group. They have Cade, they have Jay and Ivy, they have Asar Thompson, they have Jalen Duran, they have Ron Holland. They have five guys that they legitimately believe in. They're all around 21, 22 years old. That they all think will take a step this year, which is why they went out and only acquired Tobias Harris, Malik Beasley, and Tim Hardaway Jr. They had $60 million in cap space. Instead of going out and making an aggressive swing for Brandon Ingram, making an aggressive swing for someone like on his caliber, they decided this young core will be good enough if we just get them some solid vets around them. I'm not sure if any other team in this group has a young core that they believe in to that extent. But you also have Tim back. Hardaway Jr. and Tobias Harris on the same team. And that almost <laughs> yeah. screams tank. Yeah, look, <laughs> look, I'm telling you, I, I, look, they're not trying to tank. It doesn't mean that they won't end up with 24 wins, but it is it is what it is. I, they're not trying to get there. <laughs> uh, Brandon, uh, the Wizards are trying to be as bad as they can, right? Oh, we're absolutely going to be tanking. I mean, Kyle Kuzma's a 
the commander, and Jordan Poole's the driver of the tank, man. I mean, we are uh, the 2025 draft and the 2026 draft are very important for us because we're very early on in the rebuild. We're year two of rebuild. And I, I'm going to challenge the Pistons real quick, man. Now, I get it. You look at the young core of, of the Wizards, and it, nothing really excites you. But look at the, what, you know, the trend of the NBA is going, you know, positionless basketball. We have a lot of versatility. I mean, Black Bali, you know, 6'8", about to be 6'9". He's still grown. He's still young. Alex Saar, Bob Carrington. These are guys who are definitely part of the young core going forward. Now, obviously, we're looking for, you know, Cooper's flag is a guy you're definitely looking at. You know, Ace Bailey's a guy, Dylan Harper. But the Wizards, hit, they're hitting the right direction. Now, looking at, you know, the Pistons trying to throw shade on the Wizards a little bit. I mean, look, you know, we're trying, man. You know, you guys got the pieces. And I'm just saying, so. All I'm going to say is that you guys need to – be getting out of the Troy Weaver business as soon as possible. Oh, you guys Lord. made the mistake. <laughs> you guys made the mistake of taking Troy Weaver from the Pistons and then went and got two of his two of the players that he had here in Sadiq Bay and Marvin Bagley. So you guys need to be trying to get out of that business as soon as possible. He ain't lying so, though. <laughs> he's not lying at all. <laughs> so I have a feeling who we're not going to mention in the next segment, but coming up, we are going to get into which team has the brightest future. Sorry, Wizards. Sorry, Nets. We're going to talk about probably the Pistons, probably the Raptors, maybe the Bulls. Is Kobe White anything to get excited about? Who's got the brightest future coming up next on the Locked in NBA season preview? Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, the number one sports book in North America. And NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game and you want to make one of those live in-game bets, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you go and place those bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. It's, of course, not just NFL stuff. You can go and peruse all kinds of NBA futures. Maybe you believe, like I believe, in the Toronto Raptors taking the over of 29 and a half. Maybe you are taking the under on the Pistons or the Wizards or the Bulls as you definitely should. It's all there for you to peruse over at FanDuel. So go check them out again. $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. It's the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, back at it here with Brandon Hayes and Koo from the bottom of the Eastern Conference hierarchy, taking a look now at which of these teams has the brightest future from here and beyond. And before I tell you all why I'm correct in saying it's the Toronto Raptors, I'll give you guys the floor. Hayes, uh, who you got? Do you have your beloved Bulls, or are you too sad and morose about the entire state of that franchise to entertain such lies? Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I'm a Bulls fan through and through for my entire life, but I'm not a stupid Bulls fan. So, no, I'm not going to say that they have the <laughs> brightest future. I do think it's brighter than some give it credit for. I do think Kobe White showed a lot last season. He's still kind of inconsistent and broke down towards the end after a shoulder, a, shoulder, a shoulder injury. And I think if he comes back and he's talked about how he wants to um, – how he wants to fix his consistency. He wants to work on off ball, which is one of the weakest part of, parts of his game, which he's now going to have to do with Josh Giddy being there. We also got Modest Busillas, who was projected to go in the top five by most mock drafts. The Bulls have some pieces that are there to get excited about. Io DeSumo hit just as big of a leap as Kobe White last season, especially defensively. So we got pieces that I really do like on this team and I think can be part of, a, of what you build with, not necessarily a player that you can build around yet, so with some lottery luck or something that the Bulls could have a better team in the future, but I won't say that they have a super bright future. They just have some bright spots on the roster, and it's up to this front office that's completely generationally incompetent to figure out how to bring it all together. So. <laughs> uh, Brandon, it, it's not the Nets. We know this. Uh, who you got as the brightest future among this bunch? I mean, I'm a realist. I'm with my man over Hayes, man. I'm a realist. I'm, you know, I'm a loyal Wizards fan, but I'm a, I'm a realist. Um, out of all the teams here, I mean, I had to mess my man Koo, but it's gonna be the Pistons with the brightest, the brightest future. We're still early on in the rebuild. We're year Definitely. two, and they have a pillar guy in Kate Cunningham, where we don't, we don't have that one guy where we can really say we can build around him. I mean, we have a lot of veterans. A team like you know, you're looking at Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, uh, Jonas Valanciunas, Malcolm Brogdon, that we have to flip at some point the deadline or beyond, and then at that point we're going younger. So we'll see if we can grab that pillar guy in the 2025 draft. But right now, we still don't have – I mean, we have a nice core. I, I do like Bilal Kulabali. I do like Alex Sarr. Bob Kansas is all. Keyshawn George can play. He's a sniper. Uh, Tristan Vucevic, we'll see. And Johnny Davis probably not going to be on the team. But um, 
we're it's still early on to really see if we have that that one guy we can build around. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think the Wizards, like, if they can get a dude, then things start to get interesting because I really like Koulibaly, but I, I think as, like, a number one, he's not it. You got to go and get some luck in the lottery this year. I keep on hearing about Cade Cunningham, this pillar basketball player. Cade Cunningham, Cade Cunningham. Scotty Barnes is better than Cade Cunningham. Has been throughout his entire career, and I don't really understand how Cade Cunningham is viewed ahead of Scotty Barnes when it comes to like dudes from that draft back in 2021, uh, Scotty Barnes has just had the better career to this point. He is, I think a better defensive player. He's a more athletic player. He's a better passer. He is a guy who just kind of does a little bit of everything. And the Raptors have gone out and added players who actually fit around him in that, you know, they shoot threes and stuff. Emmanuel quickly, I think is in line for a big season in his first year as a lead guard. It wasn't super pretty. No one watched the Raptors down the stretch last year. But if you did watch the Raptors, you would have seen Emmanuel quickly kind of learning the ropes of being a lead guard, of how to run an offense, of how to sort of balance his incredible off-ball movement and three-point shooting with his on-ball creation. I think there's only going to be a lot more to kind of milk out of the chemistry between him and Scotty Barnes going into next season. R.J. Barrett is 24 years old, and I know everyone looks at R.J. Barrett as the guy he was with the Knicks. He's just not that guy anymore. He completely streamlined his game and became this ruthlessly efficient, off-ball cutting, driving, and scoring at the rim guy. He was like top five percentile in rim frequency and rim percentage after the trades last year, and he did that basically every game. He was like 22-7-4 and four metronomically throughout the entire backstretch of last year with a 60% true shooting, shot 39% from three. Those three guys are better than any trio in any of these teams. I, I, I feel very confident about that and when you look at the pistons all those guys you named ron holland asar thompson jalen duran what do these guys not do it's shoot threes you need to shoot threes to matter in the modern nba Ku, how are the pistons going to overcome none of these guys having three-point juice and don't tell me fred vincent's gonna fix everybody uh well fred vincent will fix everybody but uh <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> um but the simple answer is Kay Cunningham is better than Scotty Barnes. I'm going to tell you guys why. Um, if Kay Cunningham was drafted into a situation that had four players left over from an NBA title team, I, I assume that people would think differently of him as well. If he had a team built around him that had quality NBA players, instead he had to share uh, over 1,000 minutes with Killian Hayes this past year, almost 1,000 minutes with Marvin Bagley this past year, almost 1,000 minutes with James Wiseman this past year and had to be around probably the worst supporting. He played with 34 other players this past year. That's more combined, I think, probably than the Wizards and Bulls rosters combined this past year. He, <laughs> he had 34 teammates this past year. And despite that, um, you li like you mentioned, not many people watched the Raptors down the stretch. I don't think anyone watched the Pistons all year, let alone down the stretch. Um, so <laughs> I people didn't they really were pay losing all those games in a row out of like uh, some sort of weird, sick, twisted uh, like liking of pain. It, yeah. it did. I'm not going to lie to you. It kind of did. It, it, some people maybe tuned in a little bit towards the end of the losing streak. But I think what people, I've, I think a lot of people have missed is that in the midst of all that, Kay Cunningham took a leap this past year. Uh, this past, let me get the exact numbers up. I just had it. Uh, this past year, he averaged 23 a game, 7.5 assists, 4.3 rebounds. He shot 45% from the field, 35.5% from deep, and 87% from the free throw line. I know Scotty Barnes shot 34% from three on 4.9 attempts, but a lot of Cade's attempts are also on pull-up attempts, not just catch and shoot sure. three, so it has different type of gravity on that. Um, mm -hmm. Kay Cunningham, I think, is an infinitely better passer than Scotty Barnes. He's the head of the snake. He's the one creating off of it as well. He's dribble penetration. He's coming off the pick and roll. He had over 500 possessions in pick and roll where he's creating four other players, whereas I don't know if Scotty Barnes is handling that level of usage with his playmaking as well. I will give Scotty no, Barnes – I'll give Scotty Barnes the, the edge defensively for sure. He's more versatile defensively than Cade and gives more energy on that side of the ball than Cade defensively. That 100% is true. Um, but Cade's also just a better pull-up shooter. He's one of the better mid-range shooters in the entire NBA. He's a better – um, outside shooter coming off pull up dribble, uh, pull up threes as well. And despite the fact that Scotty Barnes is an infinitely better finisher, I would say this past year than Cade at the rim. Um, Cade ended the season around a 55 true shooting percentage, and Scotty Barnes ended with a 56 true shooting percentage. The only real difference between Scotty Barnes and a Cade Cunningham is that Scotty Barnes got the player Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, and the remainings of the 2020 or 2021 Toronto Rap or no, 2019. Toronto Raptors championship team and Kay Cunningham's had to be stuck with the ineptness of 
uh, Brand Scott's now uh, the your, your guys' guy helping over there, Troy Weaver. Um, I will say, though, that I, the Pistons' main argument is Kay Cunningham. It's, it, it's Kay's going to take the leap, another leap this year, and show why he was the number one overall pick. Outside of that, I would agree and say – I think the only two teams are the Raptors and the Pistons. Sorry, Bulls and, and Wizards. Um, but I'll say it's only the Raptors. <laughs> yeah, no, we can we can cook in this segment. These guys don't need to talk. <laughs> um, I, I will say it's only the Bulls or, or only the Pistons and the Raptors. I give the edge to Cade over Scotty Barnes, but I can't sit here and say that R.J. Barrett isn't better than any other player on the Pistons. I can't sit here and say that Emmanuel quickly isn't better than any other player on the Pistons. Um, the Pistons only – real argument i would say over the raptors is they have Cade and they feel better about Cade than uh they do about scotty barnes and also they think that with the amount of young guys they have on their team at their age they believe they will improve at a pace that will eventually succeed that of uh rj barrett and quickly but i I'm, i won't sit here and say that rj barrett and quickly are not better than jay and ivy ron island or asar at this moment in time we can agree to disagree, but we can all agree, right? The Nets suck. Any reason to feel good about the Nets? Hayes, Brandon, anything you got on them? Cam Thomas is going to get up a lot of shots. Yeah. Oh, so that's all I that's many only, shots. He's, he's going to get up every. He may. He may break. The, I don't know what the record is for most shots taken in the NBA season. I got the over <laughs> on that for 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 Cam Thomas for sure. I'm Brandon with you, man. Else, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm with Hayes, man. I mean, Cam Thomas is about to go off, man, as far as his attempts, man. I'm man. with you on that. The Brooklyn Nets also do have uh, Detroit Pistons legend Killian Hayes kicking around, too. So maybe there's something. That, that will make a difference. In the league? <laughs> that will make a difference right there, bro. That, that the Nets got to pay team. someone, man. They got to have someone on the <laughs> roster. That top 10 pick cred will carry you a long way. We call that the Stanley Johnson rule. Uh, coming pistol. back. Hell yeah. Coming back on the other side, we will round it out with uh, which of these teams is the best fit for Cooper Flag, and we will try our darndest to say one nice thing about one of the teams in this group at the bottom of the East. We'll get to that in just one sec. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time, the single best place to buy tickets for the sporting events, concerts, theater shows, all of that that you want to go to. It's a wonderful app. I use it all the time. And if you want to go see one of these very bad basketball teams play this year, you can get cheap tickets for those games by looking at Game Time. And they're probably going to be pretty affordable for a lot of these teams. Not Toronto, because we live in a hell city where it's just expensive for everything, even when the team is bad. But for a lot of these other teams, you could probably score some great seats over at Game Time. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on the great seats that you don't have to go and search through all of the thousands of options. You just get the best tickets shown to you so you can go and buy them. And of course, if you've not been to a venue before, maybe you're checking out one of these arenas for the first time, you get seat views with Game Time as well. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. That is a wonderful thing. You've also got the Game Time Guarantee, where Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find the same seat somewhere else for less, and they have Game Time ticket coverage to boot. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code LOCKEDONNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Well, it's Game Time, of course. The 2024 Locked in NBA season previews continue. A reminder, you can get daily coverage of your favorite NBA teams by subscribing to their corresponding Locked On podcast, like the podcast we all host. It's a wonderful thing. We've got the NBA Big Board Pod for the draft stuff, too. Fans of these teams might be interested there as well. you got Locked On Fantasy Basketball. It's all there for you to go and check out. All right. We know what's at stake here in this year's draft. Everyone says Cooper Flag is the best prospect since sliced bread. Uh, it's all very exciting. Uh, he's very cool. It seems like a very good draft at the top. You got Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper on down the line. But we're going to talk specifically about Cooper Flag since he is the prize of the lottery. Um, of course, uh, our pal Koo knows exactly uh, how well things go if you really do tank down to the bottom and how often you actually get that number one pick. Uh, so it may not be any of us who end up with that prize of Cooper Flag. But which of these teams would be the best place for Cooper Flag to land? Uh, Hayes, we'll start with you. Definitely not Brooklyn. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I, just getting dunked on and he's not even here i mean listen i i, I wouldn't want to show up to talk about the nets anyway shot that man's a saint for talking about the nets every single day that's all i can say there um i, I look there's some there's some intrigue definitely there potentially pairing him with Kay cunningham with the pistons um but i'm gonna be selfish i have been i have not been selfish this whole thing i actually think if we were to get lucky with chicago and get Cooper flag because we do have a base of some solid young role players that we could be, he could be a pretty nice fit here. Already having Kobe white here, having Josh Giddy, one of Cooper flags, biggest weaknesses is his ball handling. So him not have to do a lot of the ball handling. We need a four because Patrick Williams has been Patrick Williams. And that's all I'm going to say there. Um, <laughs> so I think that there's something to be said there that, that it actually could be a fit to get Cooper flag here in Chicago, but in not being selfish, I'll probably say that, Either the Detroit Pistons or the Toronto Raptors make the most sense, unfortunately. So. We love it. Uh, Brandon, what about you? Uh, obviously, I- I'm sure the-, the Wizards might need Cooper Flag the most, but th- does that mean he's the best fit? Oh, absolutely. Look at what the Wizards <laughs> trying to do, man. I mean, they got a team that is very athletic. Defense is the name of the game. You look at the new head coach, Brian Key. He is a defensive guy, man. You look at Bilal Kulabali, Bob average defender. Alex Sar. first part of his game you're going to see is rim protection. You slide Cooper Flag at the four next to Alex Sar and Blau at the three in about two and three years, <laughs> it's going to be a nice team, man. So I think the Wizards is the best case scenario. I mean, you can look at every team. I mean, Detroit, again, I'm with Hayes. I think Detroit could definitely be a really nice spot for him. Um, looking at the Bulls, man, you already got a Cooper Flag. I mean, but Zaz Bazillus, man, I, I like this kid. I, that's a guy I definitely wanted on the Wizards. Um, I think he's got all star potential, in my opinion, man. He's a baller. But you can look at even at the Nets. I mean, even <laughs> Nets are pretty bad, but I mean, all teams can really use a, a Cooper flag. I mean, the biggest thing with the Wizards, man, is that uh, we, we're we in a major market, but if you look at Washington, D.C., a lot of people who live in D.C. aren't from D.C. So having a home field advantage is hard in D.C., not only for the Wiz, but for the Commanders, for the Nats. So, you know, we definitely need a guy like Cooper flag to kind of bring people to the arena, man, because, like I said, we have a fan base where, you know, either you, you're not from the area or you just, you, you know, you've been lit down so many times since the 70s that people, you know, need to start showing back up, so. So the Wizards, are you saying they're relocating if they can't get Cooper Flag? Is this the threat you've just levied at the city? Are, oh. are you doing a Ted Leonsis right now? <laughs> no, I'll start that now. <laughs> 100%. Uh, Koo, what about you? Uh, Cooper Flag, best fit. Would he be a good fit on the Pistons with what they got cooking? Um, so I'll, I'll be I'll be honest here. Uh, the Pistons don't deserve Cooper Flag because they've tanked. <laughs> they've tanked. They've tanked like for four straight years, and they only got the first overall pick once and have fallen the five each time outside of that. So if they try, mm-hmm. they're not. But if they were to try it again, they deserve to fall the five again for thinking it wouldn't happen again. So they I don't they don't deserve Cooper flag. Um, and they're not trying to get Cooper flag. They're trying to be better. So they don't right. want to be in this group that they're in right now in this in this episode. They think they won't be. So don't think they deserve them. If I'm being honest, I think the Wizards deserve them the most. Um, I like that the Wizards are trying to go into a full-on rebuild. I agree with what you said, Brandon, that the Wizards are finally accepting to go into an actual full-on rebuild. And I, I'd like to see teams that actually go into that and do the right thing get rewarded with you know an actual prospect to build with moving forward. Um, I would have said the Bulls, but the Bulls refuse to just move on from you know past <laughs> players, and I so can't do that. Um, the Nets. Me. We I'm, just I'm moved sorry. on from Alice Caruso. And, no, I'm, I, you're <laughs> absolutely. The Nets, I have, I have no sympathy. Sorry, uh, Adam, for when you hear this. Uh, I have no sympathy for the Nets after what they tried to pull off with KD, James Harden, mm-hmm. and, and Kyrie. Mm-hmm. I have no sympathy. They can struggle for as long as possible. So I have no sympathy for them. I, I would go with the Wizards. I think the Wizards deserve it. They got Alex Sar this year. I don't. I'm not trying to take too many shots at Sar, but I think a lot of people consider this be a weaker draft class. So I wouldn't. I don't feel like it's fair for the Wizards to get the first overall pick in what would be considered a weaker draft class. I think they, I think they would deserve to get a higher draft pick and a, a better prospect to start their rebuild with. And I like it better when smaller market teams across the league all have a chance to like build something. And I mm-hmm. do think the NBA is becoming more it's becoming deeper with talent and you're starting to see talent spread out a lot more. So I would like it if the wizards could move out of the bottom of the pack. And we didn't have as many teams um, at the bottom, just with no hope. I am uh, totally with you on like the ethics of the lottery. I-, I think if you're in the bottom five, you should have lesser odds to win the first overall pick. It should be like the sweet spot of like six through 10. 
that have the actual best chances to win, which is perfect for the actual best fit for Cooper flag, which is of course the Toronto Raptors. Uh, yeah, I'm doing the Homer thing again, but like, I, I actually do mean this this time. The Raptors with Cooper Flag. We talked earlier about Scotty Barnes. Some people don't think he's a clear number one. Okay, get Cooper Flag in. He becomes your number one, and everyone gets knocked down a, a spot in the hierarchy. I think you know the idea of pairing Barnes and Flag as like a defensive tandem is pretty damn awesome. And if you're looking to bring down the heavies of the Eastern Conference, put Cooper Flag on a team. That already has good players. There's no good players on these other teams outside of, yes, Cade Cunningham, blah, 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 to go and pair uh, Cooper Flag with here. Give him the best shot of being on a good team right out of the gate. Not have this thing where he's kind of wasting away in a small market without a whole lot of talent around him for many years. I actually think the Raptors with Cooper Flag would be a lot of fun. That said, I, I am fully staunchly against the Raptors throwing this season away because they wasted last season entirely. If they can get lucky and jump from like the eighth spot in the lottery up to number one, like they did back when they got Andrea Bargnani, I'm all for it. But in this case, yeah, I, I think the Wizards are probably like the, you know, yeah, give, give them to the Wizards type of thing. I, I think that would be a, a pretty nice thing. All right, let's wrap it up here, guys, with uh, one nice thing to say about another team in this group. You don't have to say nice things about all of them because that would be impossible. Uh, but if you got one nice thing to say about one of these teams, please take the floor. Brandon, I'll throw it to you first. Man, I, I said it earlier. Hayes, man, you guys got a good one in Matas Bazilis, man. He's a guy that I really wanted in D.C. So uh, I think all teams got a player I really like. I think Detroit's hit in the right direction. I mean, it's just they have the talent there. You know, Detroit's one of those teams where you, you definitely want to see them succeed. The league's better when the Detroit Pistons are good, man. So, I mean, same thing with the Bulls. I mean, we all – come from kind of, you know, really good organizations to have, I mean, especially you look at the Bulls and the Pistons, man. I mean, look at what they've done in the past. So the league is better when the Bulls and the Pistons are good, man. I mean, looking at the Wizards, I appreciate y'all, man. But, you know, we're still early on, man. It, it's, you know, we're really early on in the rebuild. But like I said, we, the DNA, we're getting all the right pieces, the right people in the right spots, man. So we're going to be all right. But like I said, I, out of all the teams in the, in the segment, man, I would like to see Detroit and Chicago good because the league's better when they're good. That's fair enough. Uh Koo, do you have a, a nice thing to say about one of these teams? Uh, can, I, can I have a nice thing and then also ask Hayes a question real quick? Please do. All right, so I have a, I have one good thing to say about the Nets. You signed Killian Hayes. Thank you for killing, uh, continuing his career. Um, the, <laughs> um, the Wizards, I like what you're doing, trying to rebuild and, and completely buy into a rebuild and actually do it the right way. So I think they're heading in the, in the right direction, even though it'll be a long process. I think you're heading in the right direction. Hey, is my question to you is what's going on? Like, like this is the, this is the thing I have with, this is my confusion with the bulls. They're in this group of the bottom five, but I like IO. I like Kobe white. And I really like Zach Levine still. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like even though they moved off of, um, they, they moved away from DeMar if Zach Levine actually just wants to play and isn't hurt and actually is buying in, like you guys may win more games accidentally because you guys still aren't. Do so like, why, why is he still there? Like, why are you guys not? Why is that? Because nobody else wanted him. That's just the, the fact. Nobody else wanted him. They would have moved Zach Levine for any deal that made sense for them. But I do think that it could be a world in which it actually works out best for them that they may not move on from Zach Levine. With them trying to move to a quicker, up-tempo offense, having Josh Giddy there, being able to actually move Zach Levine more off ball. He's a career 42% shooter on catch-and-shoot opportunities, but we've never did that consistently for him. I actually think it may actually work out that we kept Zach Levine. So, 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 Zach, so like, you guys will uh, accidentally win more games is what you think. Yeah. No, it's not. Keep in mind, this front office really <laughs> thinks they have a playoff. It's not an accident. They're incompetent. <laughs> Generational incompetence. The amount of cope coming across as you tried to lay out why Zach Levine actually good on the Bulls. Unbelievable, man. It's not uh, cope. It's real. Like, like Zach Levine <laughs> off ball. He, keep in mind, from 2019 to 2020, there are only nine players in the NBA to score more points than Zach Levine. Zach Levine is a great scorer. The problem that the Bulls had is that they built around him as if he was more than that. No, he's a great scorer. He has a really good skill in that. Just let him do that. That's it. My one nice thing to say is also about the Bulls. Thank you, Bulls, for being the one franchise that has taken the heat off of the Raptors' run of decisions over the last handful of years. It's really nice to not be the worst front office of the last two seasons. 
having a great time over here. Um, also, Ku, your arena is great. I loved going down to Detroit as a Raptors fan and uh, usually taking over the stadium. It's a lot of fun. I, I love going down to games there. Uh, Hayes, do you have a nice thing you want to say about one of these teams to wrap yeah. things up? The Nets. Adam covers them, so that's the nicest thing about them. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the Raptors, I love your guys' jerseys. I always love your jerseys. Oh, the new the, purples the this edition. year, the throwback yeah. purples. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Really nice. The Wizards are doing rebuilds, right? Teach AK, our, our president of basketball operations, something very. And the Pistons, I'm a laps. I've been a Bulls fan for 37 years. I it might, I can't say anything nice about the Pistons, but I, I like Koo Ku a lot. So there you go. Koo's great. We love Koo. Ku. Koo's amazing. Love Brandon. We First love of all, Hayes. The, for him to be able to keep any type of positive, like towards the end of the season, Koo was just like, shoot me. But hey, Koo is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the positivity coming from, oh, the season's over so soon. Hell yeah. Um, that feels like a pretty good place to end this. The podcast is over so soon as well. Everyone, thanks so much for hanging out here. Go check out Locked On Wizards, Locked On Bulls, Locked On Pistons, Locked On Raptors, and Locked On Nets, even though we ragged on them all day long. That's going to do it as Nick's playing the thing and the show's over. Bye.